Goons and mutants. Good morning to you. Well, you're probably going to see this in the afternoon, so good afternoon to you. Um, I am sitting in front of a customer's super cool Marshall JMP50. It's a 1977, I believe. And this is initial power up. Let me get the current limiter on. And you already know everything you need to know about these. I don't need to rehash the old stuff, but uh, this is uh, part of the intake. We're going to make a quick assessment and uh, just do an overall health check. It's supposed to be running pretty well. And as you can see, it's in great shape. This is one of the, one of the rare ones that actually has uh, the metal, the metal nuts here, the hardware. So it's the first time I've ever had one of these on a bench that featured that. It's always been the, the plastic jacks. So, um, you know, the, the old three quarter shot, because I don't have fancy camera gear. Let's get her warming up. Actually, let's see what kind of power we're getting through the wall today. We're getting about 117 volts out of the wall. We're going to set this to 120. Let's get her warmed up. Let's see what the old bulb is going to tell us. Uh, right now, we're just in standby mode, so we're not going to get a whole lot. Let me see if I can get you guys up there to take a peek. And, and there, there it is in the center of the shot right there. Get her off of standby. A little bit of mains hum. All the volumes are down. All the controls are down. I like what I'm seeing, so let's get her off of the limiter. Yeah, we have quite a bit of mains hum here. I do have a 400 hertz signal uh, at about uh, 500 millivolts. That's a half volt for you goons out there who are curious. Now let me get the master up. So some noisy pots straight away. Okay, so we have some, we have some noise there. And uh, this amp uh, reportedly has the original tube set. So we're gonna, um, once we get this chassis out, we'll go ahead and take a look at that. Maybe that's responsible for the, uh, the background hum, and uh, it could, could indeed be something as simple as the, uh, the filter packs. So let's check it out. All right. Okay, I'm gonna move her over to a, a triangle wave. Because I think it does a better job of exploiting the tone controls. Those harmonics really help. Okay, so you could probably hear a, a, quite a pervasive level of hum there. That's the attenuated input. So let's um, let's run a, a frequency spectrum analyzer and see if we can determine. The, the pitch of this hum here. Though, though to me it sounds like, it sounds like 120, but I could be wrong. So be right back. Oh, pardon me, I know I said JMP, but um, I think I said 50 by mistake. This is a 100 water. So pardon me. It's always cool to see the old uh, music store labels. Um, I'm gonna keep that there. Super cool. Well, I found this interesting. It looks like the hum went away. When I tap the tubes here. Maybe just some, some dirty sockets. We'll see. And it looks like um, over here on the, the business end, 
and I can't. I'll just break this thing off for you guys. Over here on the business end, we do have a couple of uh, replacement caps and a pot that was, uh, looks like we have a pot that was replaced and I'll fix the solder on that guy. Yeah, I'll fix that for you, buddy. I'm still gonna measure the ripple. Um, we'll, we'll test these caps out, but surprisingly quiet. That's good news. All right, and here's that cleaned up solder joint on the back of this pot here. So that's gonna serve us well for many years to come. All right, and then you can see that these guys need to be cleaned up a bit. Pardon me, I'm gonna have to move the, the camera here so I can see. Be right back. I was able to resolve the preamp noise by uh, one run of shielded cable over to the grid of V1. Your, your pot noise has been resolved as well. You have a little mechanical noise left in your power tubes. I should have mentioned uh, at the onset that the, the tubes are not original. Um, these are some old Svetlanas that are a little mechanically noisy and some um, tongue saws. One of them had to be replaced. And I think I'll go ahead and just flip her over and um, show you a quick way to uh, check ripple. These are the original caps, all of these, uh, these multi-sections. Show you a quick way of uh, checking ripple without even removing a chassis from the head shell, if that's the position you're in. So uh, hopefully help you speed uh, diagnosing along a little bit, but uh, stand by for that. With the preamp tubes removed, and uh, you can, if you want, you could remove all of the power tubes. I'm just gonna check one. You're gonna wanna make sure that, uh, I'm gonna put, because I don't need the racket, I'm gonna make sure all the levels are down. I am gonna make sure that we have a load connected. It's the output jack. These marshals are always super sensitive to um, to no load conditions. This is some uh, very expensive iron you don't want to be replacing. So we'll get uh, the phone mounted up. All right, let's just take a quick look at the plate supply nodes and just see if there's any discernible ripple. This thing's remarkably quiet. Um, I do need to go through, and I believe we have a contamination issue on the tube sockets. All three preamp tubes are microphonic and need to be replaced, however. So we're going to be sniffing around for AC. Let's get her straightened up a little bit. There we go. Let's just work our way down. Here's the main reservoir cap. Wow. Okay. Let's work on our way down. And we're working our way down. Head on over to the preamp. Nice. Excellent, quite surprising. 
Boy, I tell you what, it's been really hard to get back into these videos. Uh, the last four weeks have been insanely busy here at the shop. Lots of changes going on um, <clears throat> with work life and trying to balance everything. But it's it's been a it's been an incredibly arduous journey, but it's been one that I wouldn't trade for anything. It's just one of those things that forces growth, right? You can quit or you can move forward. You can quit or you can move forward. So I know where I stand on the issue. There's nothing I'd rather be doing right now. Um, by the way, I hope you don't mind that I kind of cleaned your little guy up a bit. I didn't knock all the decades off. She's still got a lovely patina. But your wife will let her come back in, right? So uh, just a quick uh, recap on the service. Uh, dirty input jacks. We had some heavily contaminated uh, tube sockets. Input jacks, uh, I think I, I mentioned that. I, I really had to deep clean those. Uh, we were not getting a good uh, connection to ground. I wasn't shunting the signal all the way on the attenuated input. So that was that. I needed to replace the, the grid wire going to V1 from the volume control. That that reduced the uh, the amount of noise coming from the preamp by about ninety percent plus. What a lovely change that was. Dirty pots. Um, check the ripple on 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 the whole thing. It, it's incredibly low for, for a fifty year old amp. I, I can't believe how well this thing stood up. Uh, the tubes are are non original. Uh, some old Svetlana's looks like nineties. Uh, uh, about 90s vintage on those. Uh, a little bit of heat discoloration on the on the tube bases. They're holding up pretty well. A little mechanically noisy, but lots of gain left. And the, the amp still maintains a very tight low end. You'll hear. Um, you had three uh, tongue sole preamp tubes in there. One of them was microphonic. I replaced that. And uh, just found some uh, broken uh, solder joints throughout. Uh, one of them on uh, one of the high tension fuses. Um, another one on one of the the speaker output jacks. So I just uh, cleaned all that up, resorted everything. I corrected uh, the uh, the grounding on one of the pot casings that was uh, replaced. So she's looking great. She's sounding great too. So we should we should take her for a spin, huh? So let's do that. Let me quit jaw jacking. Uh, again, you're not going to get any uh, fancy playing. This is just a proof that the service has concluded successfully. So I can't really play. This is literally my finger. This is as much as I could bend it right here. It's awful. Might as well just turn it into a slide, huh? So let's get her up. You're going to hear some noise from my humbucker. See? Such a fat, <laughs> fat sounding amp. <laughs> This thing will absolutely punish through this 412. You know, it's pretty astounding. <clears throat> if you look at the music uh, that was being developed back in, you know, 77, when this circuit was just loud and proud all over the stages of the world, um, 
there was an opportunity to create music that was much heavier, but it just wasn't there yet. It was the writing that wasn't there yet, but certainly um, the, the amount of gain that one could get out of this amp, and even with uh, some unbypassed stages on the front end, notwithstanding, it was plenty enough. Plenty enough. And wasn't MXR around back then for boosting the front end? I love how dynamic it is with just the volume control on the guitar. Not bad, right? This is volume on 50%, depending on the pot taper. Wow. love it um what a fun project i appreciate you i'm sorry this is a very noisy room too by the way there's a 735 foot rf blaster about a mile away under a mile away the uh, kfi tower so if it's if it's quiet in this room it's quiet everywhere but yeah thank you for letting me work on on your amp what a man what a fun project so I will reach out to you and I will schedule a pickup. Bye.